The 2024 season is poised to bring a lot of excitement and close racing after Red Bull has allegedly reached the top of the development curve and started to see diminishing results, while the rest of the grid is progressing hard in developing their challenges for the upcoming campaign. However, there will be lots of changes from the FIA and F1 as well, which will definitely help in compacting the grid and put a lot of pressure on the team's strategies, as some of these rule changes have raised some eyebrows throughout the paddock. With this in mind, what are all of the changes in 2024, and more importantly, could they be the key factor in a season filled with excitement and close racing? The number one goal of Formula One is to introduce close racing by changing the regulations. And while we're still two seasons away from seeing a massive change in the technical aspects of the car, 2024 is not a season we should be throwing under the bus just like that. For example, there will be lots of changes in the sprint races, which would directly affect the starting grid as well as the teams applying changes to their cars, an issue that we saw up to four cars starting from the pit lane due to the massive floor of the previous rules. And we're going to see overtaking as close as lap 2 thanks to the DRS effect. So, let's start with the changes one by one and see which one has the biggest potential to change the pecking order. The most important one is that the FIA has chosen to keep its current stance on the power unit rules, and although we were supposed to see the teams being deducted one power unit per driver for the 2024 and 2025 season, the length of the calendar seems to be too much pressure for the teams to make it work with only three allocated PUs. The meeting that happened on February the 5th in the F1 Commission has seen the power unit allocation brought back to four, and this means that the teams will still have the same opportunity they had in 2023, push the engines to its maximum and extract as much performance as is available. But this is just the tip of the iceberg, and coming up next, we have the DRS change that came as quite a shock to the majority of the fans. Up until this point, the cars were allowed to use DRS from the third lap of the race start, as well as the race restarts after a safety car or a red flag. But from now on, the cars will only drive one lap without DRS, which does have massive potential to change how the grid will look after the first lap of the race. More often than not, we've seen a lot of attempts to complete a pass after the first lap, but they were unsuccessful, with massive blame going to the DRS not being available, as well as the tyres not being heated enough. The tyre issue will persist, but with the help of the DRS, there should be a lot of passing on lap 2. As we've seen in Baku, this effect applied to the RB19 had the potential to add so much as 30 km an hour difference in speed between the chasing car and the chased car. Of course, this also has the potential to cause a lot of red flags due to the former issue I just mentioned, the warming of the tyres, and a lot of lockups are to be expected in these attempts. But what can I say? Closer racing is the ultimate goal, and this move is definitely contributing towards that. With the 2022 changes massively focusing on the aerodynamics of the cars, the FIA felt like there was something they could do in order to change how this aspect could be improved by the governing body of the sport. One of the most discussed changes was to remove the wheel covers that had a massive effect on the airflow and the aerodynamics of the car. But although a lot of talks were made to remove them, the original position of the FIA remained unchanged. We will still be looking at these wheel covers with hopes from F1 teams that the sport would get them ditched in the following years. The halo system, one of the most originally hated but then universally accepted ideas in the sport, has undergone even heavier testing for the 2024 season following the Silverstone crash in 2022 between Zhou and Russell. The fact that Zhou escaped that event with just a couple of bruises on his body speaks volumes about the importance of halo in the sport. But that doesn't mean F1 is going to stop with the development and improvement of it. Quite the contrary, the mission goes on. On top of last year's changes regarding the shape of the roll hoop and the minimum height for the point of application on the homologation test, from this year on the roll hoop must be able to withstand a much stricter load test to make it even more robust in case of another Joe accident is to appear from 2024 onwards. Better safe than sorry is the motto that F1 is following, so there's nothing much we can say here regarding that matter. Of course, the most discussed and probably the most important change for 2024 comes from the controversial sprint races. Although Verstappen's wish to get completely rid of them is not going to happen given the fact that these weekends do indeed bring entertainment and a bit of a shake-up on the entirety of the grid, there will be very important changes that have been voted for in the past couple of weeks. For example, the sprint shootout will move from Saturday to Friday, which would come after an initial free practice session for track acclimatization and setup work. The sprint event will now take place on Saturday, ahead of qualifying for the main event on Sunday later that day. The big change is that the Parc Ferme rules, the one that saw the Austrian GP getting Hamilton and Leclerc disqualified due to excessive plank wear, and both Aston Martin and Haas cars starting from the garage due to them not being able to work on car setup changes properly, 
will no longer be implemented between the Saturday sprint race and the Sunday qualifying session. This means that the teams will finally be able to work on their setups before the race and therefore make sure that the main event on Sunday, the one that brings the most points to the team, will be optimized to perfection from their side. And given the fact that we will have six sprint weekends this year, starting from China and then following to Miami, Austria, Austin, Sao Paulo and Qatar, this is quite a massive change that will see a lot of underdog teams bagging huge points. The calendar itself is poised to hold the record-breaking 24 race year. And while this was also planned for the previous year, the cancellation of the Chinese GP as well as the Imola floods have helped the drivers in terms of surviving such a schedule. But if everything goes according to plan, the sport would see itself matching a challenge that many dubbed impossible just a couple of years ago. And it doesn't stop there. With the introduction of Madrid's street circuit from 2026 onwards and Catalonia still not being voted out as a race, there is the possibility for that calendar to increase to 25 races as well, as Chicago is also one of the cities in which we might be seeing the F1 caravan visit in the foreseeable future. F1 is also trying to aim for 30 races in one season in the near future. A very important financial change for the 2024 season is the capex limits. This means that in order to ensure that the biggest teams on the grid don't have a locked-in advantage due to the cost cap itself, Every team on the grid can now spend more over a four-year period on capital expenditure, or more precisely, capex, in order to upgrade their facilities. This is something that the lower bracket teams like Haas, Alfa Romeo, Alfa Tauri and Williams will benefit hugely from, because what was initially a limit of 45 million for the rolling four years has been increased to a massive 65 million for the four teams that have finished in the bottom four of the standings on average since 2020. With AlphaTauri taking a more independent step from Red Bull, and with Williams bagging an increased prize money from the sport after finishing 7th in 2023, these two teams would be more than happy to invest in their future development and increase the plans and budget for the future. In 2024, we will also see an increase in the number of testing days, thanks to Pirelli's request to the FIA. From the original 35 days, we will now have 40 days of testing for the tyres, which comes after heavy accusations against Pirelli and the durability of their tyres. What this is going to help the teams and the FIA understand is whether or not they should be pushing towards the ban of the tyre blankets, a topic that seems to be transferred left and right but never paid enough attention to due to the lack of data and the obvious risks of crashing right after the drivers go out on track from their garage due to the cold tyres. Another very important change is the car's structure, or more precisely, how much carbon fibre the teams are going to be using in order to meet the weight limit set by the FIA. Obviously, the number one issue of every car out there is being as light as possible, and one primary process of achieving this is by using carbon fibre. Now, it will look kind of ugly as the F1 fans labelled the Alpine's car, lacking a lot of colour and being full of carbon fibre, but if it does the work it's supposed to do, bring a lighter car and therefore making it easier to manoeuvre, then I guess there's nothing to be changed. With this in mind, what do you think about the changes that the sport will witness in 2024? Let us know in the comments below and if interested, click on the video appearing on your screen right now.